morning, everyone. We are here in Virginia. Karen, yep. how are you? Good, thanks. So uh, we're enjoying the nice warm weather out there. It's, it's about 70 degrees. It's freezing cold. It's a blizzard out there right it's now. It's 19 Virginia. degrees and it snowing and freezing. freezing roads. I'm ready for my world. I think Dr. Berg's mic's <laughs> not on. Oh, yeah, he forgot to take it down. Oh, you got to plug the mic in there. So can you hear me? Can, every, can, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? All is good. You want to start over? Oh, look at this. Forgot to put the mic on. <laughs> I'm just going to stick this thing on right here. How okay. about there? So, welcome. Good morning, everyone. And uh, like I said, um, it is wonderfully warm out here. It's and where, where are you? 70 degrees. <laughs> I had to pull, get my pen, my security blanket. Okay, and I can see All right, it. great. So, um, all right, good. So, wow. Completely so forgot about that. This is like, this is just like the backstage, the back scenes. So, you want to start over? No, that's fine. We'll just okay. dive right in. I think uh, Ruth, uh, Ruth <laughs> has been waiting for a while. She's from Texas. Um, are you there, Ruth? Hello, Ruth? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Hi, can I hear can me? hear you fine. How are you doing? <laughs> we can hear you. I'm doing good. Good. Uh, before my question updates, I mm -hmm. was the one who wasn't able to get my life insurance because of protein in my urine. Yeah. Right. And it turned out to be just dehydration. Now I drink between four and five quarts of water a day. And I did use the wheatgrass powder and up my apple cider vinegar a little bit just to be sure. Interesting. But I have my life insurance. Oh, that's Yay. great. That's Bye. that's There's a really good. Uh, in my urine. That's a really good piece of data because, um, you know, um, I'm um, I've been telling people like you know don't drink unless you're thirsty. But sometimes people are not thirsty at all. They don't. They need to drink something. So I think that's a good point. Color of the urine. Yeah. Color of the urine. Yeah. It has to be the wheat color versus the really dark brown that mine was. Gross. Right. Right. Gross. So <laughs> now I know. Lesson learned. Lesson uh, learned. My menopause, yeah, my menopause hot flashes have gone away with the wild jam. I take two in the okay. morning, two in the afternoon. So um, I'm sleeping through the night now before I was waking up every couple of hours. Um, but it was all cured with the wild jam. Wow. That's awesome. awesome. So my question today is for a friend. She of has course. cornea okay. hair. Mm -hmm cornea tear that was repaired with a laser, but she's noticing some arcing in her other eye, and she's concerned that she might have one in the other eye. What can she do to prevent this from happening in the future? She's a lifter, mm -hmm. so when this happens, she can't lift for several weeks, and mm -hmm. of course, nobody wants their eyes to be affected. So is there anything she can do to keep her eyes from getting those cornea tears? Yeah, in fact, I, uh, I had a really bad cornea tear tear it. So I've been through it. I have the t-shirt. It's not fun. There's definitely some things you need to do. it. First of all, uh, in order to get a tear, either there was an injury or there could have been a, like a pre, um, I guess, a, kind of a susceptibility to getting them. And that usually is insulin resistance. When, the, when someone uh, has insulin resistance, uh, they have high levels of insulin. They may not have high sugar. They may. Um, but it, there's so many things that happen to the eye when you have blood sugar problems, especially insulin resistance. The eye gets sticky. You start getting pressure in the eye. Uh, you start having problems with the, the retina, which is the nerve that connects to, right into your brain. So you have um, even uh, dehydration of the lens, and it's susceptible to getting tears. So you want to fix that. You also want to take food uh, high in vitamin A, uh, but not beta carotene, but more retinol, which is basically cod liver oil. Salmon's good. Um, also, uh, sardines are good. Um, butter is great. Um, the other thing you want to take if you want to um, see some quick results is that there's a product. I don't carry it. It's from Standard Process. It's called Iplex. You can find it on Amazon. It's awesome for any type of old eye injury. You take it and it just seems to actually speed up the healing very fast. I mean, even if you have an abrasion or an irritation of the eye and you take this, within literally 10 minutes, all of a sudden you get relief. So it's called iPlex. It's from Standard Process. You can look it up. Thanks for your question, Ruth. <clears throat> now, Karen. Yeah. Today. Yeah. We're gonna give three tips out. Okay? Count them. Three tips. Three. So we're gonna give three tips. In three fact, tips. I may, if I'm in the mood, give a fourth tip. Depends on the crowd. 
who shows up. But these are, <laughs> these are really, really important. So if you guys are uh, having any temptation to click off, you're going to miss out big time. These are life-changing tips that you need to know this data. So stay tuned. We will be dropping these little nutrition bombs throughout the, the talk. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I like it. Where do we do? Do we have anyone co coming from different places around the world? All over the world. I only wrote down so far: Finland, Russia, Saudi Arabia. I think uh, all over the United States, India, Louisiana, and we know Louisiana. Louisiana is like a different country. It's a different isn't it? country. It is it's a different, a different country. country. Okay, and all of Belgium, all over the place. Okay, but we have a question. First of all to mm -hmm. tag on to what you were just talking about. Uh, what can help floaters in the eyes? Well, that's usually a breakdown of uh, protein in the eye. It's in, in your body's in a state of like um, a catabolic state. Uh, catabolic means breakdown of tissue. Anabolic means building back up. So you'd want to, um, you know, do things to improve your adrenals. You want to do things definitely to, you know, get the basics in. Do healthy keto and intermittent fasting to help yourself with insulin resistance because if you're in a blood sugar issue, you have more breakdown of tissue. Um, it's nothing new underneath the sun. You just need to put the basics in, work on the adrenals, and that should help. But I will say, depending on your age, like if you're 80 years old and you are, have been living very unhealthy your whole life, it could take more than a couple of days to get rid of that problem. So, FYI. FYI, good, yeah. good. And now, uh, here's someone says, eating very low carb. Of course, we don't really know what that means, but they say they're eating very low carb. They have a blood glucose of 109 at bedtime and 140 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why? This, this comes up a lot, and it's called the dawn phenomena, where you wake up and your blood sugars are high. It just, me it just means, this is a transitional thing. It, it's more of a, the liver is making sugar. It's, it's called gluconeo. Neo meaning new, genesis meaning the creation of mm. glucose, making new glucose from the liver. So um, what's happening is your body's trying to, uh, it's, it's going through this adjustment. You haven't fully um, got into a state of adaptability yet. Mm -hmm. Got to give it time. Um, the body, I think the liver senses a low blood sugar, so it starts making sugar, and then the sugar goes high. So, you know, it's really kind of something you want to support the liver. One thing you could do as a little tip is take some apple cider vinegar before you go to bed. Why? Because that actually improves insulin resistance. And uh, it seems to help the liver, okay. helps to stabilize blood sugars. Save the liver. And uh, yeah, I tried to find that quote. I couldn't find it. It's a Monty Python. No, it's, well, yes. Yes, isn't it? It is, but I wanted to find the original. Um, I'm not dead yet. No, who's the? That's Monty Python. No, it was, it was, a, it was the original Save lady. The it, was the, it was the cook, it was the French cook. J oh, Julia Child. Yes. She's the original one who Julia said it, but I Child could not find that the liver. quote. Well, that's funny coming from her. She's, how much she's a cracker. saving she actually did. She had a great show. She was awesome. So, Karen, yeah. um, I just want to bring up one little side note. Um, okay. It's not a tip. It's a side note. This is a side note. This okay. is not a tip. All right. Um, just found a study that... Um, will really help people if they have pet mice oh, or yes. <laughs> pet gerbils or hamsters. So guys, listen to this. It says right here, a high-fat ketogenic diet causes hepatic, that means liver, insulin resistance in mice. Okay, it's just been a new study out, okay? So if you have pets that are mice and gerbils and hamsters, I used to have a lot of hamsters, make sure you don't put them on the ketogenic diet. Okay, because that could, that could, we don't want to actually create insulin resistance. Per, per the study. Yeah. I mean, you, th this is really great that they're looking out for our pets um, because, you know, you don't want your mice to actually get a fatty liver. But tell me more. Diabetes. Tell and me more. Gut. All right. You want to know more? I want to know more. All right. So I'm going to give you a quote from the study. It okay. says, it should be mentioned that the ketogenic diet used in this study, as well as other studies in mice, mm. may differ from the ketogenic diet diet used in humans. Okay? Mm-hmm. So, um, basically, did you hear what I said? I did. My phone down. just started ringing. I thought I had everything off. Uh, so, so it's... What, it, so what did I say? <laughs> we do this all the time. So what you said is, 
that the ketogenic diet that are fed to mice during ketogenic diet studies can actually differ from the actual true ketogenic diet so that it appears to be studying though not using the ketogenic diet that you and I do. You know what just blows me blows me away? How much who who's spending money trying to figure out the, um, um, you know like giving doing mice studies? Someone's spending on, a lot of money on this. Yeah, well, let me just let me just tell you guys. So if you actually look there's so many um, side uh, news articles based on this study. It's insane. Okay, so what happens? Um, it's idiotic because if you look at the diet that they're feeding the mice, it's called a ketogenic diet. It's right here. You can look it up. I'm in fact, I'm going to do a video on that today. Okay, but you have to cite the study. So I you will. Know. Okay. I'll put a link down there. This is the ketogenic um, diet. It's basically a a diet for mice. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's um, basically 76A modified high fat paste, ketogenic diet. Nummy. So this is what they do. They have the macros. They're talking about the macros. That's all, it's all about the macro, like the combination of protein. So protein is 8.6%, fat is 75%. First of all, they're low in protein, aren't they? Um, and then they have carbohydrate, 3.2%. Okay, that's good, right? So you're thinking, wow, I got the ratios. This is gonna be a great ketogenic diet. It's gonna prove that the ketogenic finally is very unhealthy. It right. will cause insulin resistance. Cause problems. If you ever hear that, guys, try to find out what they used as Do far as the diet. Do the deep dive. Because they have a little button here called ingredients, okay? And this is the ingredients that they fed the mice. Lard, butter, mm. but I, I'll guarantee it's not grass-fed. Corn oil, mm. okay? It's not, this is not organic, it's GMO. That's GMO. Casein, that's protein in milk. Okay, it's probably not organic. Cellulose, mineral, and vitamin. I'll guarantee it's probably synthetic. And dextrose, that's a synth synthetic sugar. So it's fat and sugar. Yeah, but not healthy fat and not healthy sugar. So we're, we're basically getting a situation where um, if anyone consume this diet, of course they're going to develop insulin resistance. This is the type of crap that's out there. It's just like misleading people and people, like I, I've had some doctors, you know, do articles on this. It's based on this little study. And if no one read the study, they, they would believe it. Oh, I'm not going to do the ketogenic diet. We're all about doing a healthy ketogenic diet. On that note, we need to go to Marsha from Texas. Go ahead, Marsha. Are you there? Marsha, come in, Marsha. Calling Marsha. Dallas, Texas, Marsha. The Dallas, Texas, Marsha. Okay, so I'm going to have okay, someone Marcia. try to contact try her. Again. Let's go to Barbara. Are you there? From Centerville. Yes, I am here. Hi, Centerville. Barbara. Yes, hello. neighbors. Hi. Hello. Yeah. Hi. So my question was um, what to do currently. Sorry, this is kind of extemporaneous. So my son was found to have a goiter, mm -hmm. also called in my journey a... Uh, fluid filled cyst and we had blood work done we had ultrasound done um, and we're waiting on the results from that um, and also had the fluid expired and um, but my question is what do we do now I've had physicians say cut all of the thyroid cut half of the thyroid the fluid that came out was just clear liquid I don't know what to do for him nutritionally at this point. Mm -hmm. Do I supplement with iodine? I'm just at a loss. Okay. Well, first of all, before I say anything, anything that I say is not meant to diagnose your son or anyone. No medical I'm just, advice. Just, just oh. I'm meant to give you um, suggestions to do your own research. Um, now, question yes. I have, does your son have any type of symptoms involving a hyperthyroid or a hypothyroid? No, he is regular weight, I've, and I've asked that question to every physician I've spoken with. They said the thyroid was functioning perfectly, that he was not hypo or hyper, and no antibodies were found either. Okay, good. And how old is your son? He's 26. Okay, so I, I'm just I'm picturing this small little child. Um, was there anything that occurred just before it as far as a change in his diet? I'm sure it's been perfect his whole life, but is there anything <laughs> that occurred, um, a change before he got this cyst? 
Right. Now, he has been under a, a constant amount of stress, uh, just life changes, for, I would say, five years. Okay. And uh, we've been watching that for a while and trying to help him through that as well, but nothing that would be a, 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 left, a hard left turn that would have said this would happen. Okay. So I'm going to put you on mute. I'm going to tell you what I would, would recommend if I were you. Um, I would do seek help because uh, deficiency of iodine can cause cysts in the thyroid and even in women and breast. Um, so that's one thing. Number two, I would get him on the basic eating plan, healthy ketosis, intermittent fasting. Why? Because, um, you know, we have a symptom. In fact, me medicine's all about treating the symptom, managing the symptom, but they don't really emphasize putting the basic food eating plan in. And what's neglected is the huge connection between what you put in your mouth and your health. And so, so many people, after they get these basic, simple eating plan implemented, uh, all of a sudden the symptoms go away magically. So you don't even need to treat it. So, because if we, if we start giving him certain elements or nutrients and things like that without fixing the diet, he may not see the changes. So that's what I would do if I were you. And if you happen to get surgery, I would highly suggest just taking out what's, what's uh, abnormal, not the whole thing, because a lot of times you also take out the parathyroid. It creates compli com complications with calcium. And um, I mean, you need your thyroid, but you don't need the whole thing. I mean, you could survive with partial thyroid. So that's just my thought. Thanks, Barbara. All right. Let's go to Social Karen's media. question. Okay, go ahead, good. Karen. So what about shoulder pain on keto and IF? I'm assuming they're doing keto and IF. Shoulder pain. Is it right shoulder side or left pain. side? Shoulder pain. Doesn't say. It's probably going to be on the right side, more than likely. And that's usually gallbladder. Um, you need to do more intermittent fasting. You need to watch your nuts and not consume too many nuts. Watch. Because what happens is that will, it has certain things in it like anti-nutrients. One is called lectin. And that, uh, especially in um, certain nuts, like even almonds or peanuts, and then you eat them, and then what happens, it aggravates the bile duct, which is the connection between your liver and the gallbladder. Not even the gallbladder itself, the bile duct. It creates an irritation. There's a nerve there. It goes right to the right shoulder. It's a nerve. It's called the phrenic. It goes right through in here. So if you have right shoulder pain, you press on it, press underneath your right rib cage, massage it. If it goes away, then we know there's something going on with that. Um, so, okay. yeah, I would just get the basics in. Be careful of too much of the wrong thing. Okay. And then uh, someone writes in their mom has an A1C of 12 and an albumin creatinine mm -hmm. of 380. Do you know anything about that? Well, I don't want to get into diagnosing numbers right now, but, but let's okay. just take the, the, the elephant in the room. If you have an A1C of 12, normal should be about maybe 5.2, 5.3. So they need to be less. on keto and IF. Well, yeah like majorly because that's like way off the charts, that's diabetes. Um, so you want to do healthy keto and IF and you'll see a huge drop in the A1C, which is basically an average of three months of blood sugars. Okay. Yeah. Another one here. Can you do intermittent fasting or keto if you have Crohn's? <laughs> you need to do intermittent fasting if you have Crohn's. Um, you need to avoid grains and gluten. Um, I would highly recommend to um, go get a food allergy test because um, there's, you know, like if you go to the doctor, um, they're going to be talking about, well, we're going to check the um, IgEs and the antibodies and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, but, but what triggers this immune reaction? What is triggering it? It's related to food. And so you want to find out what you're eating that you are allergic to. And it could be something that's, that you're not even suspecting. It could be even like eggs. It could be, I don't know, anything. And so once you find that, you eliminate it. Once you eliminate it, it takes between 10 and 30 days to get rid of those antibodies that are your immune reaction. Um, so you'll, you might see a gradual improvement, but you'll see within a month, you'll see a great improvement. When you do intermittent fasting, that will speed up the results of the repair. So the combination of avoiding certain allergies and intermittent fasting is, is deadly powerful. 
Okay. Okay, great. All right, did you know what I said? You... you know, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I was watching I you. know you start. I was and talking I, to I the have, person. I have such confidence. Right, you're having a conversation with whomever asked the question. Go ahead, honey, I'm listening. <laughs> then I'm I got to move on to these I'm other guys. On the, uh, these guys have uh -huh. other questions. Yeah, go ahead. I can multitask. You I know other couples never do that. You said something about allergies and if it's eggs and don't eat it and it takes a month and, you know, in summary. Okay. All right. Well, I think on I that hear note, you with my, my right ear. It's going in, but it's not really it's going connecting. Out. Going out. Connecting the dots. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I think it's time for the first tip, Karen. A tip. Drum roll. Okay. Now, no drum roll, please. There, this is just a, a, a really important tip. And there's a condition called neurasthenia. What is okay. that? Neurasthenia. And it's basically a condition which is very interesting. Oh, I'm, Look at okay. me. Look at me. Just so you know, social media. <laughs> He's, he wants my attention. She's actually checking her email. Okay. I am not checking my email. Okay, so okay, go. neurasthenia. Okay, so what that is, it's a condition where you have um, a loss of energy to the mitochondria in your brain. Okay, in your nervous system, your central nervous system. The mitochondria are the energy factory. The little energy of the factory cell. of the cell in my brain. Yeah, the central nervous system. Okay. So basically, you you have a problem with energy production in your brain. And when you say you, I mean one. You. <laughs> <laughs> so there's various symptoms that occur. Okay. Okay, and it's it's involving your senses. Like you'll be looking at a picture and it's like moving a little bit. Or you'd be walking and the floor is kind of like moving a little bit. Or you're, look, you're trying to read something and the letters aren't quite stable. Huh. Okay? Or you might have a loss of smell. Or you might smell something that's not really there. And what's this um, called again? Neurasthenia. And so it involves your perceptions, but it's a dysfunction of the brain. Okay? And it's, it comes down to one uh, vitamin deficiency. B1. No. Not on this one. Oh. And I don't think anyone's going to guess it, so I'm just going to tell people what it no, is. No, let them guess. We have really All smart right. people. Okay, guys, see if you can guess the vitamin deficiency okay. that causes this. If you've been paying attention, like I have. Like Karen has. Okay? Okay, so I'm going to look right now. Go ahead and Come give on, me guys. the answer. What do you think causes this? Neurasthenia. No Googling. And it's just got to come we'll, from what brain we'll basically cells. Um, come back to you after I talk to Charles okay, from we'll Quebec. Are you there, snappy. Charles? Yes, I'm there. Hi, how are you? I'm there. Fine. Um, <clears throat> my wife, um, uh, I'm running for my wife, who is uh, 50 years old. Mm -hmm. um, she gained weight uh, about 24 uh, years ago after several, several vaccines. Uh, before her uh, nursing internship, and then uh, she has to stop everything. She was very bad, and she got uh, more than one, 100 pounds in one year because of that. After a few years, she tried to lose weight with no, no, uh, no, um, no uh, success. Uh, and two years ago, she began to do some fasting, uh, some uh, juice fast, uh, some uh, dry fast, and uh, uh, herbs, things, and things like that. And she lost she lost about uh, 100, more than 100 pounds. But after a few uh, or less very long fast, uh, she, uh, she stopped and began to to eat again. And then the uh, the water of her, her body all goes goes to uh, went to uh, her legs. So her legs were very 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 swollen. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so she and then she has to go to the hospital to check why 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 is that going this way and then she she discovered after testing that she had uh, fatty liver mm -hmm. so so and then she uh, she tried to uh, to do something about that so she tried to change to keto and and try to find how to to get rid of that and with no success and. Um, and then uh, she, uh, she she discovered your video and uh, and tried different things and and took uh, uh, many of your supplements um, uh, about uh, with cruciferous food with. Uh, and just to summarize uh, summarize this one question really a little bit faster because we have like a lot yes, of people on the yes, line. Yes, um, yes, yes. Go ahead. Yes, so so she so so she she still have very swell, uh, swell, uh, swell, uh, swelling in her, all okay. of her body like it's very severe edema. 
uh, liver. I don't know. And she's not losing weight with uh, the keto, uh, okay. with LTT keto. We, we're doing uh, uh, doing. So, is there a reason why her, her body will prevent to get rid of the water and get rid of the of the fat? Is there something that prevents sure. that? Even she's let's doing talk, everything. Let's that talk about that, Charles. Okay, I'm just cut you off there because one thing I, I forgot to tell everyone. Um, if you have like a history and you want me to diagnose, yeah, I don't have time to do that. It's just like very simple questions because I have so many callers around the world. So Charles, I totally got what you said. And so there's a couple tips. One thing is choline for a fatty liver. I think that'll help a lot. If you're doing the ketogenic diet, I would also look to see if you're doing it correctly based on this book, okay? Make sure that you're doing intermittent fasting. For someone like your wife, I would probably have her do one meal a day for sure. Oh, it's called OMAD. Now, there is some things to repair that virus damage, uh, and it's fulvic acid is, uh, you can find that in the health store. That's really good for the gut. I would probably have her start taking that. Uh, as far as the edema goes, um, I think it's related to the liver. So I think you're not going to see changes until you fix the liver. So that's really about the healthy version of keto and choline, okay? A, a good amount of choline. That's what I would do. Thanks, Charles. All right, good. What do we got for answers, Karen? Oh, answers. We're so beyond that. We're back to questions. But answers came through lots. Uh, I'd say the majority were D3, K2. There mm. was some F, B12, K, D, B. Some people said minerals, but I didn't write those down. So I think the, uh, the D3 and the K2 were probably and B12. Okay. So... Um, I'm going to give you one more clue, Karen, see if you can get it. This common deficiency occurs if you consume excessive amounts of corn. There's a protein in corn that blocks this vitamin. Wow. I've never heard those words come out of your mouth, ever. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, so that doesn't help me. It's that vitamin B3. Okay. okay. Maybe niacin. one. Niacin. Niacin. Yeah. Maybe um, one or two people said that. B3 is intimately involved as a coenzyme in the mitochondria, involved with metabolism and, and energy production. And uh, I mean, you, it's, B3 is a very serious um, problem. But I don't think a lot of people have a, a class, it's called a classical pellagra um, problem, which is a severe deficiency. I think it's a subclinical. Mm. And I think if you're just slightly <laughs> deficient, you're going to have some of these things. If you get really deficient, you'll start having dementia, skin problems, diarrhea. How about diarrhea. depression? I've read some studies yeah. where depression. high dos dosages of niacin yeah. really dramatically improve Absolutely. the Absolutely. It lowers your um, cholesterol as well, mm. and it also helps to prevent diabetes type 1. In fact, if I had type 1, I'd be taking niacin. So, uh, so can you take the no flush, or does that change? Oh, you can take the no flush. Uh, but the point is that you can actually take doses um, 10x comfortably, what normal, so-called normal, you, more than normal, 10 times the amount, and to, to actually improve certain conditions. Um, but, you know, if you happen to be sitting out in there and you're reading a book and like, boy, these letters are moving around or you're, you know, if you, like things are kind of crawling on the wall, like, check, it could be just a subclinical B3 deficiency. Now, how do you create a B deficiency? It's either you're consuming too many refined grains, corn, too much alcohol, or you have a digestive problem that you can't absorb it. So in other words, let's say, for example, you have um, scar tissue in your gut and you just can't absorb it. That could be why you're not um, absorbing it. So if you take more but you can't absorb it, is that going to help you? Yes, you have to take more to drive it in. Absolutely, Karen. Good, okay. good point there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Guys, there's two more powerful tips okay, okay. that you don't want to leave. We're going to be revealing these shortly, so don't go away. Well, it's 11.30. Do well, we want to do one? No, because we just gave one. Yeah, but you we said you also had four, a fourth one that was a surprise. I may release the fourth one. Depending on the qu are the questions good enough, um, then I'll release it. Are the questions good enough? But I need to go to charge. I need to go to Claire from California. Are you there, Claire? Yeah. Hi, guys. Hi. How are you? Hi. Good. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. Um, uh, just to keep it as brief as possible, um, I've been doing kind of 
fairly low carb for a while, but now I'm trying to do just like full keto. But I separately from this, I have a lot of pain. Um, and it started when I took artemisinin slash wormwood and like was eating like high fat at the time. But I just have all this pain. I think it's related to digestion is what I've been told. But it, it, it's really hard for me to eat fat. And like I took ox bile and um, like vinegar and other stuff to like make it easier. But I still am like in a lot of pain from eating high fat. And I just wondered like what you'd recommend for someone that like wants to do keto but has where, difficulties with that. Where is even the with pain? ox bile and things like that. Where's the pain? It's it. It's in my left side. They tested to see if it was my pancreas. My pancreas was fine. I think the liver was fine. I don't, I don't know exactly what's causing it. Okay. Here, here's what I would do. Very simply, I would go get a food allergy test. Um, and are, okay. you, are you consuming any nuts or um, cheese? Um, yeah. I, I try to limit the nuts, but yeah. Yeah, if you actually just kind of knock those out, just just to assume that it's an allergy, put those to the side and see if you get better. Because if you're, a lot of times people jump in, just it's just the fat, but it could also be an allergy. It could be something in the food that you're eating that you're allergic to. I would definitely rule that out because you'd be surprised how many people are allergic to that. I would probably cut out the nuts and dairy and see if that doesn't help you. The other thing that you want to do, uh, if you tried the uh, the gallbladder formula or some bile, you want to start focusing more on the stomach. Take more like betaine hydrochloride or apple cider vinegar and pills. Take more of that before a meal to help you digest. And then the last thing is like, are you doing intermittent fasting? Um, yeah, I do 16-8 and then yeah. I've done like longer fasts, but those are harder. <laughs> Yeah, I think the fact that you it's harder to go longer tells me there's probably insulin resistance. You're going to probably see the most relief when you can shorten your window to three to four hours of eating because you'll have your, give your, your whole system a chance to reset and heal and you're going to start feeling better and better and better from that. Uh, there's either a problem in the gallbladder, the bile duct, or in the intestine. Something's, it's, something is causing that. So those are some things that I would do. Okay? Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks Thank for you. calling. You're welcome. Yeah. All right. So now let's go back to Marsha from Dallas. Are you there, Marsha? Hello, Marsha? Oh, she's I'm gone. Sorry. Oh, there you oh, are. Oh, I, uh, I did. Okay. Go ahead. What was your question, Marsha? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, I just recently had surgery. And I was in the hospital for two weeks and basically was strictly on IV, had no uh, food intake at all. And now I've been trying to do the fasting and, and following the keto diet. Mm -hmm. But in me, and two weeks ago, I went and had a silver and a B12 drip because of my age, you know, I, I'm just not getting my strength back and that concerns me mm -hmm. and I was wondering if you have any ideas or suggestions I finally just in the last couple of days starting to get an appetite back um, since I was released from the hospital three or four bites and I was done you know okay so I've been trying to eat you know what would give me some energy yeah uh, and and still eat properly Right. Well, question, what surgery do they do in the hospital? Uh, I, at my age, I, uh, Christmas Day, my appendix uh, perforated. Ooh. Great. So I had, I, yeah, and it was, it was a mess. You know, oh gosh, like I said, tough. I was in the hospital for two weeks. Yeah, and I had just went down to Dallas to surprise my daughter for Christmas. Mm. And that, the joke was on me. <laughs> right. Well, let me give you some tips, Marsha, okay, because you brought up a good point. Um, the fact that you have fatigue tell, tells us that there's something, your body's trying to tell you something, we don't know what it is, you could have fatigue from so many different things, um, but I'm glad that you're starting keto. I'm glad that you're doing intermittent fasting, uh, because I think over time that's going to help you. Um, given the fact that you, you're, you lost your appetite, I would probably add apple cider vinegar to each meal, and you... you put in some water and drink that down to start to get the stomach more acidic. 
That's really, really important. And I would only put in my body high quality food, like fish, especially salmon. I would do small, probably salad, probably you want to get used to that, and, uh, and probably um, as far as supplements go, you definitely need the B vitamins, so get some nutritional yeast, because I think the B vitamins are probably the single biggest thing that will cause fatigue, and uh, it wouldn't hurt to get some electrolytes as well without sugar. So uh, I have a lot of data on my website about that, so B vitamins, electrolytes, and then do the keto. Give it a little time, Marsha, and I think uh, it'll, you'll pull out of it. The fact that you had an appendicitis tells me there's your diet probably needed some help a long time ago, but now it's time to put the health stuff back in there. Thanks, Marsha. All right, Karen. Okay, we have a couple questions before your tip. Yes, go ahead. Um, does it matter, tea, coffee, water, what beverages when you're doing intermittent fasting? Yeah, of course, um, it does matter. Um, I think if you're going to do coffee, st stick to one, you know, because co coffee can actually pull out nutrients. Um, however, it's it, completely getting rid of coffee. Um, it's not going to, some, some people, there's some benefits to coffee, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, but make sure mm. it's organic, uh, but not too much of it because it's going to stress the adrenal. Uh, tea is fine. Ideally, if you do like a naturally decaffeinated tea, that would be awesome for fasting, and then water, and then take your electrolytes. Like keto fasting tea? Yeah, I would recommend that for sure. Dr. Bertica. Okay, good. And then um, here's an interesting question. Yeah. From Dina. Or it could be Dinah. Okay. Uh, my 16-year-old got a rash. He's been keto for six months. The rash doesn't itch. It just looks bad. But he does eat low-carb tortillas, mm -hmm. which is not keto. I mean, a yeah. low-carb tortilla is probably six grams of carbs, just one tortilla. Like the question is, like, what's the ingredient? Um, and, and on a kid, what I would do is I wouldn't necessarily look at a, especially with a rash, I wouldn't look at some nutritional deficiency. It's more like a reaction to some food allergy, something he's eating. I would uh, keep a log, and I would probably eliminate certain things and see if it goes away. Because, I mean, especially if you're going out to dinner, you're having something different, uh, even the so-called low-carb, low just because it's low-carb does not make it healthy. And I did a video on that. There's all sorts of ingredients that are supposedly low-carb, but they give you reactions, digestive reactions. And also low-carb often means lower carb. Like a lot right. of the ice creams out there are low carb. They're not low carb. They're lower carb than six grams of sugar. Forty-five grams of sugar in yeah. in ice cream. So if you have, well, when we talk about ice cream, people usually don't have one serving. Same with tortilla. Are you eating two or three? Is it GMO corn? It's a lot of. Yeah, that's what I would do. Okay. 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 Karen, good. I, I think we're ready for the next. We are. This is going to be basically a question for you guys. Okay. Okay. Um, what vitamin deficiency is behind scoliosis, knock knees, I know and bowed legs? Bowed. Okay. Say it again. Bowed legs. Bowed legs. Okay. okay, guys, so see if you could give me an answer for this one. What okay. nutritional deficiency is behind that? Okay. You let me know, and okay. I'll come back to you. Come on, guys. I'm counting on you. Okay, so Susan, you're... Are you there, Susan? Yes. Hi, how are you? Fine, thanks. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, I'm calling. My husband and I both started keto, and we did the test, and he is 150% the adrenal problem. Okay. Um, and I was just so happy to finally figure this out. But my big concern is that... Um, had to be 20 plus years ago he had one adrenal gland taken out mm -hmm. and the other one does have a small um, non-cancerous tumor still in it and they still re but they're refusing to take it out just because of course um, the problems that it would cause to lose both of them mm -hmm. so we are following the adrenal keto one for him I'm just wondering is there any certain way that we should be doing this, anything extra that we should be doing with, with this um, 
with this condition? Like what else we can do for this? Well, that's a good question. This is, this is one of the reasons why I wrote this book because it goes into body types. And, you know, you have, uh, not everyone just has a weight problem. They have other issues. So the adrenal is, is probably a real common one. And if you have adrenal weaknesses going into this and you add the keto, you might need other things to support that. But I will say, just the fact that you're on keto and intermittent fasting together will greatly reduce the stress on your adrenal glands immediately. Okay, the other thing is the nutrients. The adrenals need a high quality vitamin C, not synthetic, but food-based. So you want to get a food-based vitamin C. Uh, the adrenal also um, needs a good amount of potassium. So that would be a lot of vegetables. That would be very important. The adrenals also need a lot of sleep. Um, long walks are really good for the adrenals to lower stress. It's all about keeping the stress low. So do whatever you can to keep the sleep really good and the, and the stress really low. There's a great product that I have called Sleep Aid, which I think would be beneficial. And then there's something called um, cortisol, Adrenal and Cortisol Relief, which is kind of during the day and then take the sleep aid at night. That, that seems to work good. I personally take that and I can go to bed pretty fast, right? Mm -hmm. Like I can just go, bam, I'm out. And after, I, I mean, I take this within 20 minutes, I lay down, and next thing I know, I'm waking back up because the quality of sleep will help the adrenals. But the, the 20 minutes later that you're waking back up. What? The 20 minutes later that I'm waking up. You said I up. go to sleep, bam, and 20 minutes later I'm waking back up. They don't want to do that. Are you you oh, mixed in I, your I napping. Mixed in, when I take it 20 minutes before I go to sleep, then I wake up in the morning. In the morning. See, I, I, I left that out. I left I, out. I was going to get all that. the questions here, so I thought I would, I would ask in advance. Yeah, so th those are some key things. Um, there's a massage tool that you can work on the adrenal points. That really helps as well. That You can just pull stress out of the body, and you'll see that you'll just like feel really stress-free from that. And lastly, nutritional yeast, uh, because the B vitamin is very important. Okay, thanks, Susan. All right, Karen, what okay. do we got for answers? We got a ton of answers. Um, Bs, calcium, all kinds of things. But I think the number one answer is vitamin D, and some people are saying D3. If you answered vitamin D, and which is D3, um, you are right. Yay. Okay, so well done on that, guys. You are correct. It's vitamin D deficiency. So here's the problem, Karen. Yeah. If a person is pregnant yeah. um, and breastfeeding, I'm sorry, they just delivered and they're breastfeeding. E right. The amount of vitamin D in that breast milk is not very high. In fact, it's only going to satisfy like 1% of your RDAs. So that means that you have to get sun or take cod liver oil. And, and if a mother doesn't know that, and they, all of a sudden the child is deficient in vitamin D, here's some of the symptoms. You're gonna have... Um, Sweaty head. Yeah, your head's gonna sweat. That You just basically gave the fourth answer, but okay, that's fine. Um, so you have sweaty, your head just starts breaking out sweat. How many kids have that? So many kids have that. Um, you can also have sleep problems and you can be colicky. Because think about it, vitamin D is great for um, bone pain, muscle spasm, especially low back pain. If you have low back pain, you should be taking vitamin D. Especially mm. if the muscles in the back are tight. It's a vitamin D3 deficiency. One of the best sources of vitamin D is cod liver oil. Don't go cheap with that. Do something like um, virgin cod liver oil. That's the best. Um, now, I just want to say, you know, my mom, as I, when I was growing up, my mom said that when she was growing up, every single day, and she was raised during the Depression, but every single day, one teaspoon of cod liver oil. Yeast. And then they made this cookie called Tasty Yeast. And it was basically nutritional yeast, and then they probably added some sugar or chocolate or something like that to make it, but every single day. Nutritional yeast and cod liver oil. I think they're copying me. And you know what? She really she had health problems uh, later in life, but really, she wasn't sickly or have had a lot of metabolic issues. I mean, at right the first sign of a cold, you take that cod liver oil, boom. Yeah, cod liver oil is a, it gives you a, a nice balance of vitamin D and vitamin A. Mm. So if you want to see in the dark, 
vitamin A is what you need to take. So anyway, so we got that, that out of the way. Good. Good. Now, listen, guys, we have <laughs> we one got... last question. Okay. This one is, I saved the best for the last. Oh. And this has to do with, now I'm not going to say, it just has something to do with something. You'll have to find out. But you okay. don't want to click off. That's the technical. He's being technical now. Yeah. It has something to do with something. Yeah. But I am getting a couple people asking, how can they share their success stories with you? I would love to see your success stories. I do have a link. It should be in some of the videos, but and I don't have it memorized. So I tell you what, just send it to Dr. Berg at drberg.com because I want those success stories. With before and after pics. Yes. that's. And if you wouldn't mind, Karen, yeah. um, I have an itch right there. If you could scratch my back, I really appreciate it. Yeah, right there. Thank you very much. Okay. It's driving me crazy. Okay, good. Now I can focus. Okay. All right. So now we're going to Robert from Miami. Are you there, Robert? Yes, I am. How are you? Can you hear me? Good, good. Um, okay. Let's get to my question. I just recently yeah. had a blood test after going keto um, for three months. Um, basically, what happened was my um, doctor wanted to put me on a statin right away because my LDL shot up to uh, 200. Um, and he said I'm at a higher risk for a heart attack. And um, I've always had high LDLs, or always between 120 and 140. Um, HDLs have always been about 30, 30, which is low. They, they actually shot up to 42. And my cholesterol went from two, 200 to two, what used to be 220 to 265. Um, just to give you a little history, the reason I went keto is because my, my triglycerides have always been high, around 350. And they dropped down to um, 106 going keto. So I don't know what to do if I should go take the statin or get off the keto diet and go low fat again. Um, I, I do have a family history of a really bad family history of heart disease. So a question. I was diagnosed with a, a moderate I, question fatty, I have. fatty liver. Are you, um, are you uh -huh. eating, are you consuming a lot of fat right now or not? Well, I was, uh, well, yeah, I just took the, yeah. I mean, I have been, I've been eating a lot, um, about four to six eggs uh, every morning and a lot of, um, uh, you know, fatty, chicken and uh, organic grass-fed beef okay. and, and, and that form and taking um, coconut uh, products. Are you, are you having um, anything that you're eating that you shouldn't be eating as far as carbohydrates? Um, I don't think so. I mean, the, the only thing that I, uh, that, that I know of that has carbs is the coconut flour that I'll make a mug cake, mm -hmm. uh, cupcake uh, with, um, or... Um, uh, carob powder has mm -hmm. a bit of um, um, carbs in there, but um, other than that, I'm not doing any, you know, you know, potatoes, sweet potatoes. I mean, nothing, not, not, nothing of that. Okay, so this is what I would recommend, sort. Rob. I would. Black green mm -hmm. Okay, I would. This is what I would recommend. Um, I would suggest you look up Dave Feldman, and um, you may be it's called a hyper responder, which basically you, you know, you're. There's some, I'm not going to get into the, exactly the technical part of it, but there's some interesting data that he has on this exact problem uh, because that's what happened to him. And he actually goes through how he lowered it. Um, there is some alternatives to statins that actually apparently work just as good. Red yeast and niacin. If you use that, you might be able to counter this effect. But I think it's going to be really important to understand some more data from uh, Dave Feldman especially in relationship to the, uh, the type of LDL that you might have and getting more of a deeper test to see if that is the real dangerous LDL, sticky, small, dense little ones or, or the buoyant, fluffy ones. So I would recommend that. Do that and then um, call me back and tell me um, what you find. Okay, thanks, Rob. Okay, Karen. Yes. Do you have a question? I do. Um if you're diagnosed with cirrhosis of the liver, is that is that too late to make changes and hope for any change in the liver? It's getting to the point where it can be too late <clears throat> if you don't change um, fast. Dramatically, I, I would think. Right? Yeah, because I, I don't know what your situation is. I don't know how much cirrhosis, but there is a point of no return. Like liver um, transplant list yeah. cirrhosis. Yeah, I would... Listen, if you're on the liver transplant, I would get on keto so fast and intermittent fasting to try to minimize the damage control, who knows? You don't know. You could actually possibly, 
improve that situation. Maybe not perfectly, but to the point where you might not be on the list. But the fact that you have cirrhosis tells me that you had inflammation in the liver and you haven't done intermittent fasting or, or healthy keto to prevent it. So now that now you're just kind of backtracking and trying to repair that and cope with it. So, um, and all those that are listening, you need to get on healthy keto and intermittent fasting so you can prevent this right here because this is, once you get it, it's like it's hard to reverse it, but you can uh, improve it. I don't know if you can reverse it though. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you know, you said inflammation. The other thing I think is really important to mention is a lot of people have body pain or this, um, you know, there's a lot of different names for body pain, fibromyalgia, fibromyalgia. and all of this stuff. Um, but inflammation is handled with keto and IF. Yeah, yes. And, and there's so many problems with inflammation, especially even like cancer spreading into inflamed areas. Um, inflammation is a great indicator that something is wrong. And also, the absence of it tells us that things are really going right for you. So you'll get on keto, IF, all of a sudden inflammation goes away. You know something good is happening in your body. I mean, even myself, uh, when I was 28, three years ago, um, I basically had an inflamed spine all the way down my back and my fingers. And I'm like, what's going on? I'm 27 years old, 28 years old. Like, what is going on? And um, I had no idea. But now, looking back, Deep fry night. I wish I can go back in time mm. and tell myself to do keto. You know what? I think I know I think a way. I think we're, it's time for another video on I that I know one. a way. Yeah. Time travel. Yeah, I'm going to work on that. Okay. Uh, I need to go to Robert from New Jersey. Are you there, Robert? I am here. Hi, how are you? Hello. Good. My time machine's not working, but when I get it, I'll let you know. Let oh, me know about call that. Us. I'm, I'm, yeah. I need we'll more. let you know, too. We're working <laughs> on it. <laughs> Where Good. in Jersey are you? Um, so, Mike, I'm in uh, central Jersey on the shore. Okay. Towns River, actually. Okay, cool. Uh, question, when I, um, I, I do have a lot of oxidative stress, but when I was doing um, uh, CrossFit, et cetera, and I was around 205 pounds, you know, muscular, I'm tall and thin, six foot four, and as time went on, um, I did go through a benzodiazepine withdrawal, unfortunately, and that created even more. So I hear that the keto, of course, through many of your videos, which I thank you for, um, are neuroplastic, that they do help with a lot of things, leaky gut, leaky brain. When I started keto, I literally could not stand up for a number of periods of time. So I would stand up and get massively dizzy. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, maybe I'm not eating enough. So then I would uh, do more... Um, uh, nut butters, uh, use almond milk, try to make shakes out of those fat bombs, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You know the story. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, I would still lose weight, and I can't afford to lose weight because right now I'm 167. Mm -hmm. I, I've lost from 205 down to 167. So I kind of said, well, maybe I, maybe I need carbs. Maybe I need carbs. So that's where... Okay. Um, my, that's my question. Do you still have uh, diz dizziness when you stand up? I do. Uh, not as bad. Um, have you? Have I've been you, doing uh, like front cheek Go ahead. Have you ever had uh, heard one of my videos on this condition called POTS? Yes. Okay. I'm very familiar with POTS. That came literally about maybe four months ago. That came out of nowhere. Okay. Ha did you start taking B1? I take a methylated B complex. Okay. Is that, I and would, I've been doing a traditional the nutritional yeast too. So I like okay. uh, either one. Good. So there's a couple of things I would recommend. I'm going to put you in pause and I'll tell you what I would recommend. There is a product that I, I created to help that, and uh, the type of B1 I have in there is quite unique. Um, it's called mitochondrial energy, and uh, it's basically exactly addressing that issue that you're talking about. Uh, you might want to try it. But here's the point. Um, <clears throat> the adrenals are involved. If you stand up too fast and let's say the blood can't go up to your brain, you need to support the adrenal. And it sounds like you pushed yourself and now you're, in the, you're recovering, but you're stuck between a rock and a hard place because when you do keto, you're going to lose too much weight. So uh, I would stick with about 50 to 60, maybe 70 grams of carbs a day, but not go over that. And you can do that in the form of berries um, and um, 
you know, maybe some other other type of carbs, but I would I wouldn't go to anything sweeter than that. But if you actually do that, if your carbs are a little bit higher, and then you take your eating window and you have it um, not too close, maybe you have it like eight hours between. That way it's like you're not doing it hardcore, but you're still doing two meals a day. Uh, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to eat more calories. So you're gonna have to have a little bit more fat, you're gonna have to have a little more, um, a little more protein, and then improve your digestion, and then start to slowly maybe do some low level exercise. So, but it's a combination of increasing your calories, keeping your carbs a little bit higher, and doing more like weight training eventually to kind of keep you from losing any more weight. Okay, Rob. But I think B, B1 is the main thing you need right now. Thanks for your call. All right, Karen. Um, I, I have time for a quick question we, from social media before I go to... It's the tip. It's time for the tip. Um, almost time for the tip. We got oh. about 90 seconds. I was planning on the tip. Well, I tell you what, you look for the look okay, for a question. Okay, what about headaches in the morning? Headaches in the morning. Well, just stop drinking alcohol at night so you're not hung over. Okay. Now, that's a that's usually a blood sugar issue and it's a transition transitional thing. Um, I will guarantee the night before there was something that maybe you ate that you shouldn't have eaten. So, I would for headaches um, in the morning, I would slam dunk really healthy basic keto and a little bit of IF and slowly, gradually in, go into it, but not go crazy with the intermittent fasting because I think there's a bout of um, hypoglycemia that's causing the headache, especially if it's in the morning. Okay, and last, uh, supplements or any suggestion for kids who do not eat vegetables? Stay tuned, another two mm -hmm. weeks. Mm -hmm. There's a, um, a substitute for vegetables that we're coming up with. That's the absolute best, which is, a. Um, the protein in this is comparable to whey. The omega-3s just outweigh any, anything that I know. And uh, the amount of phytonutrients is incredible, and you can actually drink your own salad. So uh, that's all I'm going to say because I haven't finalized that. So give me two weeks on that. Right. Okay, so I need to go to Danny from Olympia, Washington. Are you there, Danny? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm here. Great. You had a question, I guess, your mom has a hiatal hernia? Yes. Okay. And I was just wondering what, you know, if you suggest, she has a lot of acid reflux and yeah. a lot of discomfort. Yeah. Okay. So this is what I would do, Danny. Um, there's a, a video that I have. It's called gallbladder flushing. It involves manual work around the uh, lower rib cage. I think I would watch that video and apply that to your mom on a gentle basis and that will actually give her relief because it, it pushes that uh, kind of external pouch back into where it should be. But the other thing is like you want to get her to take more acid like in, in the form of either betaine hydrochloride or apple cider vinegar. There's some, some tablets I have called Digest Plus or formula if you want to do that. Uh, but she needs more acidifiers. What that'll do, it'll make the stomach really nice and acid and then she'll have less acid reflux and she'll have more tone in the stomach. That's what she needs because she's lacking tone. But hiatal hernias really come from a situation where you have low acids and then the acid squirts up because you can't close the valve. All right, thanks, Danny. And then um, Louise from Florida, are you there? Yes. Hi, what was yeah. your question? Uh, my question is, uh, me and my wife is doing IF and keto, yeah. and my blood sugar is going a little bit too low. Yeah. Like in the fasting, it's like 59, Yeah. and when I eat, it's like between 70, 72. I want to know if this is normal, okay. or if I have a... Do you, do you feel bad? I have a, do you feel bad, or do you feel okay? And I feel a little bit of headache and okay. heart palpitation, right? Yeah. Uh, the first thing I would do um, is I would go, go, I would get more information about how to do it correct. I want to make sure you're doing it correct because if you are, then great. But if you're not, you might need to tweak some things. Um, I think you need more volume, um, like more potassium to increase more fluids as well. Um, I would add more sea salt. 
Um, there's so many variables here, but if your blood sugars are going down too low, um, I think you, you need to support either the adrenals or the liver. But I would um, go back to the basics and find out what you're missing because there's something, something you're missing with that. Thanks, Louise. Uh, so, Karen, we are ready for the last tip. Okay. okay. Now, this relates to improving your metabolism. There's a common thing between consuming butter, talking grass-fed, mm -hmm. and vegetables. That relates to improving your metabolism and speeding up your weight loss. Okay. And there's something related to butter and vegetables. What is that thing? See if you guys can... So are you saying there's something that they have in common? Yes, something they have in common that, that improves, improves their metabolism. metabolism. Butter and vegetables. Yes. So let's see who can get it right this time. <laughs> <laughs> you sound skeptical. I know. Mm. Yeah, so butter and vegetables. Now... What do butter and vegetables have in common that aid your digestion? Yeah. No, not digestion. Oh, metabolism. Oh, metabolism. So if you were listening, listening closely. Okay, people. Um, I'll give you a hint. Okay. It improves insulin resistance. Okay. Your vitamin A, K, K. Come on, guys. A and potassium, though potassium is not a vitamin. Oh, you didn't say it's a it has to be a vitamin. No, I didn't say it's a vitamin. Oh. It's not a vitamin. I think I know what it is. Um, triglyceride. Okay, Karen, what do you think it is? Chlorophyll, butyric acid. Yes, Karen, you got it right. How do you get all these answers winner, right? Because I've been listening. Okay, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Um, yeah, butyric acid uh, is the microbes basically eat the fiber and they spit out this butyric acid, which actually improves insulin resistance, which actually will help reduce insulin, help you lose weight, because the stubborn weight metabolism is insulin resistance. That's the underlying thing. And then guess what? Butter has butyric acid. So um, this butter. is why you should put the butter on the vegetables. On that note, guys, have a great weekend. Okay. Okay. Thank you for coming. Yep. Um, I hope you're staying warm. And for those of you that are in Saudi Arabia, Turn on, you the are air, warm. turn on the air conditioner. <laughs> Local guys, stay off the roads today. And we will see you next Friday. All right, guys. Have a good one. See ya. Thanks.